You broke your FEP. We've all been there before. Let's fix it. Hey, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, make sure you get subscribed and leave a like. FEP on resin printers, this release film material, is not permanent, especially if you happen to drop your build plate into your vat, breaking your screen and your FEP. Look, it could happen to anybody, I swear, but that might have been what happened here. The first thing you do is drain all of your resin out because you've likely just made a massive mess. What we highly recommend is to have either a UV laser or some of these UV, uh, I don't know, keychain lights. They're great for curing the holes shut so you don't leak resin that is toxic all over the place. This one has got a small hole, but you know, just for comedic value. Now we need to replace it. Let's get into it. This one had a small hole right here. Um, I'll point to it. I think the camera picks it up. And uh, yes, by the way, don't get uh, 3D gloop on your cutting mat unless you want to cover it with some awesome stickers that you can get at patreon.com slash 3D Musketeers. See, you like that? That's not bad. The first thing you got to do is get yourself some Allen keys. And the better three quarters decided to spoil me for my birthday and get me a nice set of Bondus Allen keys. These will be in the description, affiliate links of course, if you want. Quite frankly, the hardest thing is finding the right size you need. For those that are worried, there is a lot of screws here. I have fully cured this under UV light. I've left it outside in the sun here in Florida for a couple of days, we're fine. We gotta do is we gotta get all of these screws out. But before we do that, I gotta thank today's sponsor, 3D Musketeers. If you are tired of breaking FEP sheets, you can reach out to the pros at 3D Musketeers. We have a myriad of resin 3D printers to help you make awesome day after day, print after print in tons of materials as well. The pros here are trained in tons of materials from many manufacturers to help you get those parts made quickly and efficiently. And if you're wondering how we do it, we've been talking about the entire month of resin here the past couple of weeks. You can actually see a lot of what we do behind the scenes. We've actually been showing client parts in basically every single video, which I think is kind of cool. Anyways, if you want to support us directly, you can do so at patreon.com slash 3D Musketeers, or you can join a YouTube channel membership for as low as like three bucks a month. And it helps the channel grow considerably because that money goes into allowing me to buy more FEP to do videos just like this. As a business, we have extra tanks, so it's not really that big of a deal for us to have one or two that have holes in them. I will just switch them out for brand new systems and then we don't have to deal with it at all anymore. It's about making things easy. Now do note, when you're in here, there might be some liquid resin. So it is recommended that once you get these first few screws out, you go ahead and whack on a pair of gloves. You can cure it all day long, but if you did get a break in your FEP, it's likely that somewhere along this line, you've got some raw resin hanging out. So take precautions, I will. Now I do recommend that you have some spare tanks. The spare tanks are crazy useful if you do have one that fails like this. You can easily pour out your resin into the new tank and continue printing put one off to the side and be able to deal with it on a later date. We actually don't have another one that we need to clean. I was surprised. I've had this one for like four months waiting to have another one to fail, but we haven't had that. So we're just gonna do this on video and it's gonna be what it's gonna be. All right, we have our gloves on. We're gonna go ahead and get off this bottom piece. Now at this point, you don't really have to be that gentle anymore because you've already decided it's ruined, so. Set this off to the side. If you want to, you can clean it. The same color material is going to go back in. So for my case, I'm not gonna bother. This is a different size hex, so make sure you keep your bolts completely separate. That is good to have. Ooh, and he got it right the first try. Same deal here, remove all of the bolts. Seriously, there's like 50 freaking screws in here. It's why we tend to do these in multiples 
because it's so freaking tedious. And if you're working on an Elegoo Saturn, any Cubic Photon Mono X, even the new 6K, or even the big Elegoo Jupiter, or Frozen Sonic Mega 8Ks, this is the same basic process. There's probably more screws, and you'll need a different tensioning tool. You'll see that there's a plastic part next to me. That is a tensioning tool that is used to make sure that you have enough slack when you put things together. Okay, we got the 24 screws out. We can separate the two plates. We can take this sheet of FEP. We can set it to the side. It is no longer needed. It is trash. Again, make sure that there is no raw resin on this. If there is, you could be poisoning your waste disposal, and we don't wanna do that. We're gonna take our new sheet of FEP. Remember, there is likely protective film on this. This one, there are two pieces of protective film. So we're gonna go ahead and get that removed here. This is basically keep it from getting scratched during transit because FEP film is really, really delicate. We are going to set our printed Part. Now, this will create a bit of a bubble in the FEP, but that's intentional. As you can see here, there is a dip on the inside. This plate fits into the tank itself, and it will tension this FEP. If you make it taut and you try to screw everything together, you're gonna have a bad time. It's gonna tear your FEP. Utilizing these printed parts, and they're available everywhere. This one is for the Elegoo Mars. We have them for the Saturn, for the Photon Mono X, and for the other machines that we have in the shop. But this is a Mars print, an OG Mars, actually. We're gonna set that piece right there in the middle. Take our FEP, set it on top, get it reasonably aligned. Bring on your top plate. There you go. Now, the issue that we currently have is we don't have any holes. The bolts are gonna be a real pain in the ass to get through. So, I'm going to use a smaller Allen key and poke holes at the four corners. We're then going to install the corner bolts first. We're gonna snug these way up. The other ones we're not gonna do that with. This is just so that we can keep it from moving all that much. Our goal is to keep the FEP from moving. Now what you'll see is it's a little bit loose. That's okay, it's also not very straight. That is also okay, none of that matters. So now we're gonna go ahead and we're going to poke all of the other 20 holes. It is just the ones that have an indent on them for now. Eventually we're gonna go back and poke all of them through, but the other ones are gonna need larger screws. It'll work better when everything is tensioned. This helps if you have like a dental pick or something that's sharp, but a small Allen key also gets the job done. Now, when you're doing these, they're gonna be a little bit difficult. The reason is that you're using thread locker at the same time, so you might have to get a regular size Allen key. Don't snug these up too much. I mean, get them tight, but don't really reek them in just yet. We're gonna do that at the end. We're gonna go ahead and torque them. Now, to my knowledge, there's not a torque spec for this, but that's okay. Really, the only thing you care about is how tight the FEP is against your tank. Again, having a clean surface is good. I blew this off with air before we started, but even doing it on something like a Wham Bam Slap Mat, code Musketeers for 10% off through May 31st, 22, which is pretty awesome. If you wanna learn more about Wham Bam, actually, we just interviewed Peter Solomon. We'll card to that video so you guys can see it. He is one of the founders of Wham Bam and a amazing designer, actually. Guy has a lot of fun to talk with. Or you can do it on a cutting mat just like this. Just make sure it is cleaned and wiped down and all that kind of thing. Now that we got them all in, we're gonna go through and start torquing them up. Reasonably finger tight should be fine. The seal is created by these, so you do wanna make sure they are nice and tight. Otherwise, yeah, you could have some leaking and we definitely do not want that to happen. Of course, remember, if you tighten these too much, you're gonna piss off the next guy. That next guy is probably you. So think twice before you do this. 
because it's probably you that it's gonna hurt. We're gonna torque these down in a star pattern similar to how you would torque uh, lug nuts on a car. I did rip my glove, but we are clean at this point, so it's okay. Not going to overly worry about it. Okay, now that you have those done, you're not out of the water yet. You still need to poke a few more holes. Bigger Allen keys are gonna be tough, but you can try. Yeah, nope, not gonna get through. Well, we'll do it with a knife. Okay, now we no longer have a need for this. You're gonna bring your tank back in. You're going to put it again. So the chamfered side is facing up. Stick it where it belongs here. And then we're going to push our bolts in. This is where torquing is really going to matter. If you tighten one side more than the other, you're not gonna have an even stretch on that FEP. And that's not gonna work all that well for you. Now, the nice thing is FEP has come way down in price. The pack that I bought, it's a 20 pack of FEP sheets and I paid about $45 for it a few years back. They're nowhere near that expensive anymore. So the nice thing is have spares. If you need to do it a couple of times, do it a couple of times, it's fine. Now you can hear as soon as we start tighten it, it's gonna start to resonate. That is okay, that's what we're going for. We're gonna get these screws basically just a bit started here. Now we can start, go ahead and tightening things up. You're gonna wanna make sure it is at least minimally flush with your tank, which this looks like it's going to get there, no problem. Now different printers will have different specifications, so do make sure you follow your manufacturer specifications. There are some sayings online for like what frequency it needs to be tuned to. Honestly, I've got brand new tanks laying around. I just kind of tighten them till they sound basically the same to me. Ultimately, a little too tight to me is better than a little too loose. Too loose means it makes a mess. Too tight means you might rip the FEP. Doing this again is not that big of a deal. It does suck. I don't want to do it again, but I can and will if I have to. When you're done, should be reasonably smooth all the way around. You just want to make sure that you can't tighten it too much more. Okay, I think we got it. This one might even be a little bit too tight, but I'm still gonna send it. The last thing to do is to use a, whether it's a sharp knife, an X-Acto blade, links in description, of course, affiliate helps the channel out, but you wanna go through and just trim off the excess. Don't do like Grant did that one time, slip up, cut right through the FEP, and have to start right over again. That sucked. Don't do that. Now, one thing to note about the Mars specifically, is that there aren't any bolts on the bottom of the tank to hold it off the surface. There are bolts on the Saturn, some of the other larger machines. So for those, you can easily just flip them over. On something like the Mars, you don't wanna flip it over unless you know you have a very clean work surface. And now, we can remove our gloves because we know clean. We no longer have any potential exposure to the resin itself. Everything is dry and cured. And so we're good to go. We can look at the bottom of the FEP, see that it is nice and clean. We can go ahead and then clean it with a dry towel, something lint free, preferably throw it on the printer, calibrate your first layer and call it a day. Remember FEP is a consumable. It's totally fine to damage it. It happens to the best of us. It happens to me quite a lot. Just not a lot recently. I've gotten pretty good at getting this stuff right. But if you don't put a cut into your FEP, eventually it does get cloudy. We can take a look at the old FEP. And when you compare them side by side, you can see how much cloudier this original one is compared to the one that is there. The one that is there is basically completely crystal clear, like literally crystal freaking clear. And the one that was there is uh, kind of nasty. This does not have to be difficult. Do not be afraid of this. But again, I recommend keeping some spare tanks around. Unless you're dealing with like an Elegoo Jupiter or a frozen Sonic Mega AK or some really, really big machines where extra VAT's gonna be a couple hundred dollars. 
eh, at that point, just keep spare FEP around. For the smaller machines, FEP is quite cheap. You could also buy it in bulk from McMaster Car and cut it to size if you want. I wasn't feeling that. I just went ahead and bought some FEP pre-made and pre-cut from the factory. I bought all this back when all we had were Elegoo Mars printers. So the stuff that we have here, not useful on the Elegoo Saturn. It's too small, but that's okay. We can go ahead and get more when we need it. This does not have to be a process that scares you. As long as you have the right offset tool, it will make life absolutely easy. The hardest thing is making sure you don't rip the FEP when you're putting everything together. But let me know down in those comments, have you ever had to change FEP? Do you oil your FEP? I know that was a thing in the industry for quite a bit. It's recently been called out as being not all that accurate. Maybe we'll test that if you guys want to see the difference between an oiled FEP and non-oiled FEP. But I've done this a few times now in our endeavors of resin 3D printing. I'd love to know if you have any other tips and tricks that you might be able to provide. Leave them down in those comments below. That's all I have for you guys today. Stay safe out there. Don't forget to call your loved ones. Resin is toxic and keep making awesome. Have a good one. It's about making things easy. Ah, hair in my mouth. Ah, thank you. Good night, sweet prince. Hey, thanks so much for watching this video and a massive thank you goes out to all of our patrons and YouTube channel members whose names are listed right next to me at the $5 tier and higher. If you want to support this channel directly, you can do so at patreon.com slash 3D Musketeers or you can join with the link right below me that says join for YouTube channel members, which gets you access to our super secret discord cool stickers, among many other things. Right below me will be the entire resin series here on the channel. We are in the final couple of weeks of the month of resin. We have a really good video coming up for you guys next week, so make sure you get subscribed. And right next to that is going to be the maintenance series for printers. Boy, I wonder what he's going to give us next week for resin. I'll see you guys down in those comments and in the next one. Take care.